right, I'm here with Matthew Regan from the Regan team in Mississauga. And Matthew, it's great to have you uh, join today for a quick chat about all things real estate. For those of you who have not met Matthew, Matthew's one of the best in the game uh, when it comes to running a team, running a successful business, knowing real estate, being ahead of the curve, uh, really honing in on some of the latest marketing trends. So in light of all of this COVID stuff, all of the changes going on that have happened really kind of overnight, thought it would be great to get on and just have a quick chat with you about uh, what's going on for you, how things are going, what are the changes are that you're seeing in the business, where you see things going in the future. We'd love to just kind of hear from one of the best. So I just wanted to welcome you today and thanks for taking some time. Hey, th thanks for having me, Scott. I, man, when I need an ego boost, I I know who to. Uh, there you go. I, I know who to call. Um, those were some pretty nice nice things you said there. Um, yeah, what what's going on these days? You know, um, this is gonna sound. Um, I don't know how this is gonna sound, but uh, I I embrace times like this, and in a weird way, I look forward to it. And I I don't look forward to the the illnesses and the the financial effects that it has on people and certainly the, the, the parents out there that my hat goes off to because I just don't know how you guys do it. What I'm really trying to say is um, there is so much flipping opportunity out there right now. Um, you just have to kind of open your eyes and um, it's the saying, you can't see the forest through the trees. So right now your job or my job is to look deep into that forest because um, there is, there is a forest behind the trees and it's full of, it's full of opportunity right now. So I'm in, I'm really, I'm embracing the new, the new norm right now. Love it. What are you seeing in those, in the forest? So when you look deep, like, what do you see kind of, so right now we're May 1st, we're recording this. So interesting time where we should be right in the peak of spring season right right at kind of the highest one of the highest busiest times of the year what do you see for the back part of the spring summer fall i mean do you have any kind of indication where you think things are going to go here yeah I, i'm gonna get i'll try to give you two answers because uh, you know just kind of taking a guess on who your audience might be i'm going to give you an answer as i see it from the consumer's eyes and then i'm going to give you an answer as i see it through the realtor's eyes so on the consumer side of things um, they're confused. I mean, they, they get their information through um, a lot of the sources that we as an agent would get it through, be it the news, the media, let's say. Um, and the truth of the matter is we don't, nobody has the answer. Um, one day the year will end with a 1% increase in home values. The next day it will be down 30%. So my advice really to the consumer is, try to ignore a lot of the statistic base guesswork. It's kind of like reading the, the Globe and Mail business section when the stock tips come out, like you really got to read it and take it with a grain of salt. Um, the fact of the matter as a, as, a, as a buyer or a seller is there will always be a house to buy. There will always be a buyer that needs to buy that, that house. And go back to the, the basics of selling a home, price it right, have it looking good, hire a professional that knows that market, that's gonna be more important than, than ever. I'd, lo I'd love you to actually touch yeah. on that because I think the psyche, and I don't know, but I, my guess would be some people are gonna be needing to sell out of desperation. They've lost their job, maybe they've overextended themselves and they need to sell and they look at real estate as a way that they can potentially save money. Why am I gonna pay an agent fee when I could sell it on my own or use a lot of bricks and kind of cut some corners perhaps like yeah and, I, and i'll give you the answer straight up and and i'm gonna take all of the bias out of it um you, you know there's uh, sayings were invented over the years for 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 usually negative circumstances and the, the one that i'm hearing is penny wise pound foolish like yeah i can you know i've lost my job um i've got bills that i can't pay um, I'm going to sell my house to pay off some debt, which is, is fine. You're in, the consumer is entitled to do that. In fact, they're entitled to do anything they want, really, so long as they don't break the law. But what they shouldn't do is look to, don't try to save a few thousand bucks on the commission by hiring a discount agent or a brokerage 
if it's going to cost you tens of thousands of dollars off the eventual sale price, the only number that matters is the net dollar in your pocket. If I, I can, here, here comes a rhetorical statement. I'm going to charge you 10%, Scott, to sell your house. And you're going to say to me, but the other guy's charging 5%. And I'm going to go, yeah, but I, I can get you 11% more than the other guy, which means if you pay me double the fee, you're actually going to make money because I can get you a 1% difference. And then of course you have to go down the rabbit hole of justifying that. And that's where the right. consumer ultimately needs to do their homework in selecting a really strong agent in their marketplace. Interesting. What are you telling your team these days? So you've got a, you've got a team, like for those of you, those people who are watching this and don't know you, don't know the brand or your team, maybe you can elaborate just a little bit, give an idea of context, the yeah. size of the team, uh, the make of the team. Like how, how are you on a business side, how are you managing a team that now can't come together physically? Like what is, what's, how are you okay. guiding them through this? So um, I'll put some context around it. So for, for, forgive some of the arrogance that's gonna fly here, but uh, 220 million in sales volume in 2019, uh, ranked ninth on the Toronto Real Estate Board, sixth in Canada for uh, Royal LePage. Uh, we, we employ either full-time or part-time or commissioned salespeople, uh, thir 30 people, uh, which I just learned 80% of them are female, which I'm so awesome. proud of. That's super <laughs> cool. Great. Um, what are we telling them? Back to basics. Back to basics. The reason I threw all that context in there is it's so easy to kind of get lost in... Um, like, oh, what are they doing over there? Or like, what are they doing over there? Like the squirrel syndrome, like, mm. no, no, no. You know, stay within your lanes. Like we know in sales that relationships are the, uh, of the utmost importance. And just calling and saying hi, checking in is what we're really trying to get the message across to our, to our team. And I, and I will say it's such a simple concept, but it's also exhausting because, yeah. because if you truly care, I look to my heart, right? If I truly care and I have four of these conversations in a the morning, they're long conversations and these people are, they're scared, they're hurting, they're confused. And it, it sucks a lot of your, your energy out of you. So what I'm saying is bare bones simple. The execution is, is not simple. It's, right. it's quite difficult. How are you finding the conversations are going with the general consumer out there? I mean, are you sensing yeah. that there is? There is some optimism. Okay. Um, we talked about this today on a call. Um, if you go back, if you would ask me that question a month ago, even two weeks ago, but let's go a month. Let's go a month to six weeks ago. The call was a nervous call. It was, um, you, you didn't want to talk shop. That was, that was, that, you, you just didn't do that. This was a call that was simply a check-in call. Fast forward to May 1st, the, there's, number one is the new norm has set in. Everybody knows COVID's here. We know what we shouldn't do. We know what we should do. So when you call, we're finding that the consumer in general is asking a lot of really good questions. Um, they're looking for answers. They like, what is going on? Are our buyers selling or buying or our sellers selling? Like, Hey, I saw a sold sign over there on my walk last evening. What did they get for it? And um, so the curiosity has P is spiking. The optimism and confidence is slowly coming back. Um, and at the end of the day, as an agent, our job is to inform people. So if you go into a call with that kind of mindset, the consumer is asking for it. They want to be informed. Totally. What do you think? I mean, what's your gut feel on the summer fall of 2020? What, what happens as a result of this yeah. to market prices, a big sell off domino effect of people defaulting? Like, do you see that kind of in the cards? Do you have a, a gut feel on that? So to answer that, I'm just going to quickly go on Amazon because they had a sale on um, crystal balls that right. could predict. So I'll just, okay, here it comes. All right, it's here. So, because Amazon's that quick. I, I have no clue, Scott. Um, I, I think if I could best answer the question, I would, I would 
I would say a couple things and I would go back to the fundamentals. I'd, I'd look to supply and demand. I think one of the things we have to recognize um, in the Canadian marketplace is pre-COVID-19, where was our real estate market at? Well, we had a shortage in inventory in most markets. We had cheap debt, so interest rates were still at historic lows. And we had more buyers than sellers. We had a very natural, healthy real estate market. So any downturn, which we've seen, and we've had, you know, there's stats right across the board that volume's down and sale prices may come down. That wasn't caused by anything economic. It was caused from this pandemic. So to kind of now answer your question, if you look to when we come out of this, be it the end of summer, uh, maybe into the fall, I think the back to basics from the beginning of low interest rates, et cetera, is definitely a positive factor. So we're gonna put that on one side of the scale. Um, people need places to live, et cetera. On the other side of the scale, let's call it the negative side of the scale, job loss, um, low consumer confidence, high debt levels because people have tapped into lines of credit, et cetera. You're going to have this balancing effect. And I think the answer is going to lie in, in, in terms of what is heavier on, on the scale. And I know I haven't given you a cut and dry answer. It's just no. a way that I'm going to personally gauge it. Got it. I love it. Curious to know about the ability to do the transaction from beginning to end in real estate completely virtually. So where are the limitations? What are you doing? Are you able to do it? And maybe if you can map us through, I'd love to kind of understand from the person who says, Hey, I want to either list my house or I want to buy. How well can we leveraging all the best technology that you've seen out there, take them from start to finish? Like, can it, do you feel like, can it be done? Should it be done? My one word answer is no, I, I don't think the residential real estate transaction can be done all through technology. And if, if I charted a map and this is the first step and this is the day you get your keys and move in, so purchase home or decide to purchase home and get your keys and move in, there are so many moving parts that take place and technology probably, and I'm just kind of pulling a little bit of this out of thin air, but I'm going to go like 95% of the transaction can be done through the means of technology. But there's one big component technology I don't think can do. And then there's a smaller component technology can't do. I'm going to start with the big one. The, the big one is in my experience and talking with buyers, so much of buying a home is the feeling you get when you walk inside a home. Yeah. And it's going to sound really corny. And to some people, it's going to sound really dumb and uneducated. But a home, homes, a, a house has a feeling. The moment you walk in, you know whether it's a healthy home, a happy home, a negative home, a distressed home. Like, and people were human, right? So, so much of the decision making that goes into buying a cup of coffee, you know, my, my pen, a house goes into, there's emotion built into it. And if I can't physically walk through a home, I, I, think, I think it makes the transaction really difficult. The other thing that I think is difficult, the smaller thing on the scale, and it does sound a bit biased, but I truly mean it, is the importance of an agent and a real estate agent. The real estate agent's role has changed as technology has, a, has, a, has a been a, adopted and as it's progressed. Um, but what technology doesn't do well as, that, a, that, a, that an agent can, again, is the human component. Um, we, we as an industry used to be the people like, hey, Scott, you've got kids and you want to move into a new school district, a new house came up. Well, you might even know about the new house today faster than I will. But what you may not know, and again, this is the importance of selecting a local agent is, you know, well, what, what are the negatives to the neighborhood? Like what, what are the traffic patterns really like? And 
did you know that that neighbor over there does A, B, and C, and John Smith over here does X, Y, and Z? Like, there, there's those components. There's also the simple component of affirmation. Like, you know, Scott, um, I know this house on the surface seems really great for you, but you told me you're going to have another child one day, and I don't. I, I think you're going to outgrow this house too quickly. Or, hey, Scott, we looked at a lot of houses, and I know you're kind of on the fence here. I'm going to give you my two cents. Here it is. Right. And sometimes that's all a consumer needs in order to make a sound decision. So long answer, Scott. A lot that's of moving great. parts, but the big right. one is the feeling and the human component. I love it. Um, just to wrap this up, because I know we've got, we're a bit tight on time, talk to me a little bit about mindset through this thing. So I know mindset's a big one for you. You're, uh, you know, uh, always into like self, you know, improvement and a big reader and love, can you give, how are you keeping your mind sharp, keeping optimistic? What are some of the things that you're doing? Uh, just talk, I'd be really curious to get your take on some of the mindset of stuff. Yeah, so, you know, it's, it's my opinion that, um, you know, I spent a month in India over the month of October, and I saw some things that I've never seen in my life, having spent most of my time in Canada. And I had this guide, and he, he was taking me through the, the slums of Mumbai. And he says to me before we got to the slums, he says, what's your, what's your thoughts on, what do you think you're going to see? And I think I would have said things like, I'm going to see poverty. I'm going to go see unhappy people. I'm going to go and see some pretty terrible things. And he says, remember that, because I'm going to ask you the same question after a couple hours in the slums. And at that point, after the tour, after the walk through the slums, it was, it was the complete opposite. I mean, in my eyes, it was one way. But in the people that lived and worked there's eyes, it was a different way. And to me, it was about a mindset. And I took that back home. And in times of difficulty, you really have a choice, right? Like, and I know there's great debates around happiness, um, but you can, can, can you choose to be happy? Can you choose to be negative? And I'm not here to wage a great debate. I'm saying to the people that are listening is I choose happiness. How do I, how do I practice that? Routine. I have not changed my routine. I still get up super early. I still read the newspaper. I read my Bible. I go for my run. I meal prep. I get dressed. I shave. I even gave myself my own haircut. Like, it's important to have a clean, positive, healthy mindset, especially during difficult times. Love it. Thank you. Thanks for sharing this. This has been great. Lots of like little golden nuggets of ideas for people. I think it's extremely valuable. Um, is there anything you wanted to kind of close off with? Any questions I yeah. didn't ask that I should have asked? I, I just, I gotta, I gotta say, you know, um, the realtor community is, um, there's some bad apples like any industry, but I'm, I'm so freaking proud to be a part of the realtor community. And by the way, when I say realtor community, I even mean guys like you, home inspectors, real estate lawyers, like all the components that go into the, the transaction of real estate is it's amazing to see people come together and sharing and just, you know, I hope just let's keep it up. It's, it's freaking awesome. inspiring. It is. It's, it's great. Thanks again for your time. This has been awesome. Thanks Scott. See ya. Right. Stay well. Cheers. You Thank too. You. Bye. Bye-bye.